In the third part of this lecture, we are going to study or introduce two special random variables. The first one is the indicator random variable, and the definition is as follows. So an indicator random variable, let's call it y, with the parameter p, is usually denoted by i of p. And this random variable will take on values of 0 or 1 only. And then the corresponding distribution of the events y is equal to 1 and y is equal to 0 is like this. The chance that y is equal to 1 is p, and so the chance of y is equal to 0, which is the, the other cases, is equal to 1 minus p. So indicator random variable corresponds to an experiment such that the success probability is equal to p. And then here, the value of the indicator, the value of this random variable, when it is equal to 1, then it indicates that the experiment is successful and zero when the experiment fails. So given this new random variable, so what is the expected value? Okay, so we claim that, okay, so let me use the notation here. Suppose that y is a random variable and then y is actually an indicator random variable. So the distribution of the values of y is the same as the indicator random variable with parameter p. Then we claim that the expected value of y is equal to little p. And this one is super easy to prove. The reason is that y just have two values, 0 or 1. So by definition, expected value of y is equal to what? It's equal to 0 times the chance that the, the, the value of y is equal to 0, which is 1 minus p, plus 1 times p. So expected of y is equal to 0 times 1 minus p plus 1 times p. So after doing some calculation, so it is equal to p. So this is a very, very simple thing. But then although indicators are very simple, they are super useful as we will find out in the coming lectures. Okay, and next, we will define an, another very, very useful random variable called binomial random variable. So you will see why we call it a binomial random variable soon. So a binomial random variable, this time, let's call it y as well, will have two parameters, little n and little p. And usually we can define, denote a binomial random variable as bin and p. So there are two parameters n and p here. And the binomial random variable will take on integral values. So this n is an integer, positive integer. It takes on integral values of 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n. And it has the following distribution. The probability that big Y is equal to the value of R. So R can be an integer between 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n. Any integer like this is equal to the binomial term n choose R multiplied by p to the power r multiplied by 1 minus p to the power n minus r. So we call this a binomial random variable because there is a binomial term inside. But what is the natural meaning of this one? Okay, so actually a binomial random variable corresponds to repeating a certain experiment n times. So this n is one of the parameters here, n times. So n has to be a positive integer. And then for each of these experiments, the same experiment, right, it has success probability p. So p will be a value that is between 0 and 1. And the value of this random variable will count the number of successes that we have. So let's take a look of the special case, okay. so. So what is the probability of y is equal to 0? So y is equal to 0 corresponds to we don't have any successes. So what does that mean? If we don't have any successes, then so, so this happens if we are failing the first time, we are failing the se second time, we are failing the third time, up to we are failing the last time, 
the nth time. So what is the chance of such a case happening? So we fail for the first, first time, it has probability 1 minus p, and then we need to fail for the second time, another 1 minus p, and so on and so forth. So the chance for y to be equal to 0, so for, for the total number of successes to be equal to 0, is equal to 1 minus p to the power n. And it actually agrees to this formula when we set r to be 0. And similarly, when r is equal to n, which requires us to have all of them to be successful uh, experiments, then in such a case, it happens with probability p to the power n. And it also agrees with this formula. So indeed, if you check for a certain value of r, then the chance that we will see the number of success to be equal to r is out of all the n possible experiments, we need to find exactly r of them to be successful. And for the remaining, it has to be failing. So the number of cases of that happening is n choose r. And for each particular case, the corresponding r specific uh, experiments that we need to be successful, we need all of them to be successful. So it occurs with p to the power r chance. But on the other hand, for the remaining n minus r experiments, we need all of them to fail. So it occurs with chance 1 minus p to the power n minus r. So here we see that whenever, actually, whenever we see a binomial random variable later, we should correspond in our mind that there is an experiment of repeating n times, each with success probability p. Okay, now how about the expected value of a binomial random variable? So here we give the, the value. So suppose that y is a binomial random variable, bin and p with parameters n and p, then expect the value of y is equal to n times p. So we give a first proof here. This is the simplest proof that I can think of. We defined indicators y1, y2, y3 up to yn. So they are indicators with parameter p. So these indicators correspond to whether the first experiment is successful or not, whether the second experiment is successful or not, up to the last experiment, whether it is successful or not. It is equal to 1 if it is successful. Now we will see that for each possible outcome, the value of y is always the same as the summation of the values of y1, y2 up to yn. Yeah, to count the number of successes in total, we've, we count whether it is a successful event in the first experiment, if so, add 1. If not, we do not add. And then similarly, we count uh, uh, whether it is uh, the, a successful experiment in the second experiment. If so, we add 1. If not, we do not count or add 0. So in that case, the summation of y1 plus y2 plus y3 up to yn, it represents the total number of successes. So for each outcome, y is equal to y1 plus y2 up to yn. So this function y can be expressed as the summation of y1, y2, y3 up to yn. And after this, then it is easy now, because we are calculating expectation of y. So expectation of y can be rewritten as expectation of the summation of these y, yi's. And by linearity of expectation, there are n of them. Each one has expected value p, so it is equal to np. OK, so, so this is uh, the, a very uh, good use of the linearity of expectation. But it needs us to be clever. We need to somehow figure out that the big y that we look at can be expressed as the summation of these little yi's. So this is the tricky point. But alternatively, we can also prove it based on the definition of expected value. So the expected value of y is equal to this is by definition, the summation of all the possible values that y can take on, let's call it r, multiplied by probability of y is equal to r. Now, this is the definition of y, probability of y is equal to r. So we can replace this by n choose r, multiplied by p to the power r, multiplied by 1 minus p to the power n minus r. 
Now we are summing things here and recall that the value of what R, this R can take on, ranges from 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n. But because when R is equal to 0, then we are summing 0 times something, so we are summing a 0 term. So we make a clever move here. We are going not to sum from R is equal to 0, but from R is equal to 1 here. The reason is that we want to make sure this R is non-zero, so that the R can cancel with the terms in this n choose R. If we recall the formula for n choose R, it is n factorial divided by R factorial and also n minus R factorial. So the R here and the R factorial there can be cancelled out so that we have R minus 1 factorial left there. After cancelling this R, we can further take away an n term from n factorial in this binomial term so that we take away this n term here, so that the resulting part of r times n choose r could be changed to n minus 1 choose r minus 1. So this is the, the reason why we want to do the, 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 the summation starting from r is equal to 1, because we can cancel r and simplify the terms here. So r times n choose r is equal to n times n minus 1 choose r minus 1. So that's why we make simplification. And also, we make another simplification. There is p to the power r here. So instead of having p to the power r, I take away one of the p outside, because p is independent of this summation. This summation is on r. So we take away a term p outside, so that we are left with r minus 1 uh, occurrences of this p. So this is the same as this one, after the clever move here. And what is this big summation? Now, this big summation actually is the binomial expansion of p plus 1 minus p to the power n minus 1. We can check it one by one. And we find that this is equal to this one. Now, what is so special about this? p plus 1 minus p is equal to 1. So we are multiplying. This term is a 1. 1 to the power n minus 1, so which is equal to 1. So eventually, we get the result to be np times 1, which is np. So this is an alternative proof. But if you ask me, then I would suggest every one of us should forget about this rule, this proof. Because the previous one is easy to remember, easy to, 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 to prove, and then also very intuitive. So the, the next one that we show here is actually just a confirmation that the linearity of expectation works. So that's all for the lecture and uh, for all, this, all the presentation for lecture 4. Thank you.